okay this tutorial is going to be about um, adding backgrounds and animation just because first thing we're going to want to do is double click the background layer and just push ok you can name it if you want I don't even bother I just want it on its own layer without having to duplicate it and then delete one of them so um, basically the tools you're going to use to you um, outline the picture are going to be the polygon list so up here and the pen tool now I have the pen tool set to paths um, regular pen tool and if you have this option geometry options rubber band which just makes a little line between the two and I have it set to what is that one called exclude overlap overlapping path area so these are just the ones that I use um, I would suggest using paths and just the pen tool um, but the other ones just add, um, use whatever you see fit all right, um, for the polygon lasso, I have just have it set to add to selection zero feathering and anti-aliased. All right, now to actually, um, other than that, there's one other way, way I use, which is select and go to color range. And you're just gonna want to select the color of the background. Like um, for me, that'd be yellow. And you just mess with like the fuzziness and such and you know whatever you need to do to get the picture you know sample more and such and you know mess with that um, if you can use it that's great or in that one um, you can either use the pen tool and the polygon lasso tool to actually go in here and just delete whatever you need um, since I make a ton of mistakes, I prefer to use a, a layer mask, which is just, you know, just click that little button there on the layer mask button. I have a little... And... Oh, God, I forgot one, one other tool. You can also use the magic wand and the quick selection tool. The magic wand... Okay, I'm going to go over to, to click the um, picture one. And you can just, like, click, and it'll select color. While... The, depending on the... The, the tolerance and the um, quick selection tool. Oh, I totally forgot. This one will select um, patterns as well. So, you know, it'll help um, define the edge, like between the purple and this pale yellow pink. And you just basically drag and go around. Um, on a picture like this, just because there is a big difference between the foreground and the background. Okay. It's probably going to be like a really crappy outline because I need to clean it up a little bit. But all you have to do is click over on the the mask square and go to the polygon lasso and fill this with foreground color, which is black. And there you go. See, that gets rid of the background for you, but it's like, um, it's still there. You haven't deleted anything, so if you later decide you want something, you can always get it back pretty easy. Um, now to add the background. Basically, you just want to paste the pattern, and if it doesn't fit, just go to Edit, Free Transform, and just stretch it to fit. And just pull it under your picture. And that's how you add the background. Now, if you want to add an animation to it, um, just got to figure out what kind of animation you want to use. Like, you, you can pretty much do anything. You just want a different slide for every change. So, if I want this gray background to, like, um, turn, like, pink, I'm just going to pick out a pink color real quick. I'm not really fond of that pink color, but I don't really care. It's for the tutorial. Edit. Fill. Okay. There we go. Um, there we go. Now, I'm just going to copy the background layer. I'm just going to merge the color with the pattern layer so that I have two different layers. Now I'm just going to copy the foreground layer. All I have to do is drag it down to the create new layer thing to make a copy. That's the easiest way, I think. And you're going to um, just merge that one down onto the background. Um, Anyway, so now um, I'm only going to have two slides to this, so I'm just going to merge down 
the kit, the guy onto the, yeah, merge visible, gray background. So now I have two different layers, and the only difference between the two layers is one has a pink background and one has a gray background. So basically, turning this, you know, on and off is going to show me what kind of animation I'm going to have. Now, um, if you have an older version of Photoshop, it's not going to have the animation. If you have a CS3, I believe it is, and above, CS3, CS4, CS5, you're going to have, you can go to Window Animation. If you don't, you're going to have to use Image Ready, or you can use, you know, Lunapic or any other site that will let you upload multiple photos and just splice them together into an animation. Oh, I just smacked my mic. I'm sorry. Um, in that case, you would just want to save both of these layer as an individual pic to turn into the animation on a third-party site. Um, now, if if you you are using image ready photoshop um hop whatever you're going to have a little bar like this that comes at the bottom if it, you don't have it you know go to window animation and i think mine originally showed like that you just go to animation frames also if you have like that layout just um should be a little bottom thing that says convert to frame animation this is the one you're going to want to use now there should be a little like arrow and some bars here you're going to want to click that and you're going to say make frames from layers. And that means if you have two layers, it's going to create two frames. Um, now, I'm, I want them to have the same timing, so I'm going to shift click, select both of them, and 0.2 second timing. I'm just going to push the play button to see. Oh, I want it to go on forever. There you go. So that's basically what it's going to look like. Alright, for saving this, you, you're going to want to go to File, Save for Web and Devices, or Saved Optimized As. And you're going to get a window similar to this. Now you're going to want to choose GIF. And I like to choose Adaptive. And you can choose what kind of um, dither you have. Diffusion, Noise, No Dither. Um, pattern depending on how many colors and what kind of picture you have it'll kind of make um, it look pixely depending on what you use now I like to turn transparency off because if you upload it to MySpace and you have the transparency on it'll be all pink and pixely um, unless you zoom in on it which is really really weird um, kind of annoying too so I have it looping forever and I'm just going to play the animation. So that's what it's going to look like. I just go to the quality, you know, n nearest neighbor. Um, I don't believe I mess with any other things. Um, just click the optimize button. Got a little color table and such. But that is what it's going to look like. Now I'm my pictures. And there you go. Um, let me pause. Um, to get it to work, you probably need to open with... I'll just open up with Internet Explorer even though I use Chrome. I don't want that. Okay, here we go. So you can see the GIF animation, how it's going to work out in a browser. And if you're satisfied with it, go ahead and upload it. And I think that covers